This year, I switched from WordPress to aesthetic side, and here's how you can do the same. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon, back with a regular video today, not a tutorial, or it's actually kind of a tutorial, because I want to show you how I migrated my WordPress blog to a static page. I wanted to do this for quite some time. I tried this pretty much uh, every holiday season over the last years, and I really ever f uh, failed on that task. I tried to use 11T, I tried to use Next.js, I tried pretty much every technology, but in the end, I couldn't just find the final solution. This year, however, I finally made the cut and I switched from WordPress, which I've used for probably five, six, seven years, somewhere like that, and I still actually use WordPress on another side, to a static page built with Swelt Kit. Now, first question is, why would I actually do this? Well, in the past, I never felt comfortable with WordPress. Yes, it was great to get started, and yes, I would recommend it to everyone who just wants to set up a blog or wants to sell some products or anything like this, where the focus is really on providing value through content. You don't need to write your own blog or whatever engine if you just want to get the word out. You can also use Medium or dev.to, it doesn't really matter. But for me, I've kind of outgrown WordPress because I'm not a PHP developer, so I never felt comfortable with the core of WordPress. I never really touched that. I didn't like the whole system of how you build uh, pages and I used an architect view to create those UIs. It, it just doesn't feel like me. So I always wanted to switch to something where I have the full control. And because I started the Galaxies project earlier this year, I had a reason to try a new technology stack. And I wanted to do Swelt Kit, or at least that's where I arrived. We're gonna talk about that in a second as well. But the the most important idea was really, I wanna get away from WordPress, from this plugin ecosystem, from like having tons of plugins, things can break. I had security issues with WordPress. I had to manually update PHP on my server. like. A ton of things I just don't want to care about anymore and with my static site I don't have to anymore. Now if you start down that journey of getting away from WordPress the first question is of course which technology are we going to use and in my case I pre-selected a few technologies. I selected Next.js because it has become like the go-to uh, React.js full no, not really full stack, but React, React JS framework. I could probably also use Remix, but uh, Next.js at the time uh, working on the migration was definitely more popular. On top of that, I read a lot about Swelt and Swelt Kit, and I really wanted to give it a try because also Jeff Delaney from Fireship endorsed it. Um, Scott Tulinski planned on using it, and. I must admit, like, I like these people and I followed their opinion and if they made a good job of researching stuff, um, I kind of trust their opinion about tools. So I thought maybe Swelt it is. Then at some point also Astro came up, which I tried and it looked really, really promising. However, um, I knew that one step further with Galaxies, I wanted to have something with server-side rendering and I knew that Astro is probably not the best thing for server-side rendering, although it still works, like everything I've done could have probably built with Astro as well. And especially like if you have a blog, if you just have some kind of content, Astro is pretty great. Anyway, that brought me back to Next.js with SwelteKit and because I felt like, well, everyone's already using Next.js and SwelteKit is kind of new and it's kind of the cool kit on the blog, let's just go with SwelteKit. It offers everything you need. Um, you can have server-side rendering, you can have static site generation, you can opt into this on a per-page basis. It has route, um, it has file-based routing. So um, it pretty much offered everything that I wanted from a decent framework. So I just picked Swelt Kid and I think I never regret my uh, my decision back then. WordPress had a great CMS built into it. So I can just write my posts, I can schedule them, I can have pages and all of this is synced to the SQL database. However, with a static page with SwelteKit, I don't really have that option. There are now two things you could do. Number one, you can use Markdown files or MDX files, with, which are like a bit better than Markdown. You can do a bit more inside those files or you can still use like a headless CMS. You could even use WordPress as a headless CMS, but there are other content options like Sanity.io, Stripey, uh, JS, something. They're more contentful is another option. So there are many options for a CMS. However, I decided against one of those CMS systems simply because I'm just a one-man show at this point. And therefore, I can just open my code editor, go into my markdown files and edit them. And that's totally fine for me. I don't need a content approval flow. I don't need to create marketing pages inside such a CMS system. I really don't need all 
all of this. If you work with a bigger team, the story might be completely different and you might want to look into those options, but Markdown is very powerful. I can have actually uh, other Swelt or even, I think, could I have React? I don't know, I could, I, well, I can, no, with Swelt could probably not, that would be possible with Astro, but with Swelt, I can still have my own components in Markdown files and they're still rendered and that's pretty powerful. So for me, definitely choice was going with Markdown files. Now, after selecting that I wanna go down the Markdown route, I had to find a way to export all my WordPress posts, which weren't too many, like probably a few hundred. I know pages which have a lot more, but anyway, I wanted a way to automate this process because I needed to create WordPress to Markdown. And I found great articles and great snippets that helped me to get started. Like this one, I checked out the repository and I made a few changes. What this does in the end is you can use an XML export from WordPress and then run it through the script, which I changed in a lot of places. In the end, however, it will give you a markdown file with the according front matter with all the relevant information you want to put in. Um, again, I made quite a few <laughs> changes here and there regarding image paths. Um, I had YouTube videos in it, usually at the end, then I tried to convert them automatically to have an embed URL in the new markdown so I don't have to manually change them. Um, however, I used a syntax highlighter plugin called Crayon. Um, so the code blocks that came out from the WordPress XML were pretty well unusable as well. So in the end, I also had this run this epic script, which was just replacing stuff that WordPress threw into this um, with my own text. For example, uh, I was trying to find all the code snippets and code blocks and I knew if a code block started with something ionic or npm or import then it is TypeScript because it's really important for uh, code blocks with Markdown to give them the right type otherwise you get wrong syntax highlighting so based on the first words in there I made this little script. It is ugly, yes, I definitely agree, but in the end the result was okay and I just had to manually patch a few posts here and there that had some issues. Um, so kudos once again to this script and the uh, creators who made this to really um, kick this off. It wasn't easy, but um, I guess for regular blocks it's actually a lot easier if you don't have like this uh, code blocks inside or things that just pollute your XML output. So overall the output was really nice uh, in MDX. I had my front matter, I had the clean post and then I manually made a few fine tuning changes. So this is the benefit of using MDX. If you're using MDX, you can simply import something like my article sign up from my very own Swelt project right here and import a styled button as well. So then I can use my own components in here like a styled button, like an article sign up, and I can easily reuse them across my MDX file. And I could just have like any kind of component in the MDX. I just need to import them with a script tag and that makes it really easy to get even more out of your markdown with MDX. So highly recommend it. There's not really anything you lose with MDX. Um, there's really just a lot to gain. So once I got the data in place, I started with a simple SwellKit template and then just moved on from there. I knew that this was just my block. It's not super important to me. It's just a place where people should land. They should have like the most important stuff uh, in place so they can get on my email list um, and a bit of about me um, sections. Nothing of this is really beautiful. Uh, however, I kind of think my dark mode is beautiful. That was actually pretty epic. Um, but I just wanted to include everything um, necessary. So most of this is really just Tailwind and Tailwind CSS makes it so easy to create these UIs. Yes, if you're into Tailwind, you will probably see that this looks very Tailwindish like. Um, however, there's not too much you need to do here. I just wanted to have a little list of cards and for the blog post, I just want to make sure that everyone can read this as good as possible. I included also discuss here, which was kind of easy in the end. Uh, and I do have this bottom component. So everything really is just standard swelled. It should be kind of responsive. Like if I go to this mode, it should also look pretty nice on mobile. Like it's not perfect, but then again, I didn't want to make this perfect in the first place. I just want to get away from WordPress. And I think, oh, that was an interesting bug. Uh, I think the, the result here is pretty okay. I can live with this for now. And in the future, um, stuff like this might be on galaxies anyway. Um, but for the moment, I hope that every one of you can find all the necessary stuff on my blog, some general about me, um, get on the email list, check out the podcast. And really, this is just 
just super easy to do with Tailwind. You could probably also lose, uh, use other uh, styling libraries, but at the moment I think Tailwind is good. I don't know what I will think about Tailwind and how my uh, pages look like in probably a few years. Like this whole, uh, do we have something, some page here? Um, this whole inline stuff from Tailwind, sometimes it's really getting out of hand here uh, with those long lines. However, um, I've gotten used to it, so I hope we're gonna see this in the future as well and I don't complain about what my past Simon self did five years ago in like 2030. After using WordPress for quite some years, I was kind of spoiled that WordPress is pretty good with SEO out of the box. You just install one plugin and then it shows you all the possible titles and the thumbnails and additional OG tags you can add and the headlines you can put in and you get a rating how good something is in terms of SEO really in, in that regards WordPress is pretty great this is also a reason why I didn't really want to use something like an SPA for my blog because with an SPA usually Google gets better with that but with an angular SPA you have really bad SEO as Google needs to like render your pages and get the stuff but with pre-rendered pages with static site generation or uh, server-side generation or server-side rendering you get a lot better SEO score usually so I'm going with that However, it is more complicated if you want to do this manually. Like, you need to take care of creating a robots file, you need to take care of creating a sitemap file, um, you want to create a manual XML, RSS stream, like all of these things are things that you now need to manually take care of. They're not hard, but it's easy to overlook them. So make sure you got the right things in place for sitemap robots if you wanna have an RSS feed and also have like a global SEO component which displays the image in the right way, and the title for Twitter and the other platform. You can easily check this with an OG checker tool uh, to see if everything's right. And then there's not really a lot you can go wrong. With. Hosting your site in the end is one of the most easiest things. At least it has become one of the most easiest things. There are services like Netlify, there are services like Vercel, you could even use Firebase for hosting or you could just use your own server. Um, but then again, that's actually not too easy. So I went with Netlify. I could easily connect my DNS settings, I could connect my domain. And the cool thing is this is just connected to my GitHub repository. That means if I make a push to my main branch, Netlify will simply rebuild my site. I can check out all the deploys in here. Did you know uh, when a deploy is running, there's a cool little game here with Netlify. So I don't want to make this endorsement for Netlify. You could also just as well use Vercel or other services. These days, most of the stuff is actually free. However, I use a few cloud functions in my project. Um, so they are under my API, like the email signup. And initially I had more cloud functions or more API routes with SwellKit, which were then deployed as functions to Netlify. And that kind of cost me some money because uh, you usually pay for invocation of cloud functions. So I had something like a search or just getting posts as the API because I thought, well, could be cool if I can get all my posts through the API. Well, turns out there are like a few thousand people per day go to your blog page and get that through the API. That's actually not a great idea. So be careful with cloud functions and how they get deployed to Netlify. But if you don't really have cloud functions, don't worry. Um, this is just so, so easy to set up for pretty much everyone. Now, one of the easiest things in WordPress is to write a post and schedule it for a specific time and it goes live at that time. And I really wanted to have this functionality because I usually schedule my posts weeks in advance just to be prepared, just to have content every uh, week. And I thought, well, how do we do this? Like there are flows to do this with um, GitHub actions and some like having some strange message in the commit and then doing this or that. And in the end, I found the most easiest solution on earth. So if I go into my MDX files, you can see that I have like a published date or an updated date in here. That means within my function to get all these posts, like you're gonna have something with SwellKit uh, on the utilities, like get posts, where you can get all the posts. And at this point, I can simply check if I'm on the preview mode, I will return all the posts. However, if I'm not in the preview post, I will simply filter my posts and only return those which are published. That means unpublished posts are just not returned to my front end. Now the problem is normally your page only rebuilds when you do like a push. And how do I trigger a push exactly at the time when one of my posts should go live? Well, the cool thing is my posts usually go live to the same time, Tuesday 5 p.m. 
So what I did instead is I went to if this then that and I went to my applets and I created a simple new applet every day at 5 p.m. make a web request to Netlify because Netlify does actually have an API so you can make a deployment or you can trigger a deployment with Netlify API. So all you can see here, daily build, daily build, daily build, every day at 5 p.m. my page will rebuild. It will then go through all the posts because it uses the get all posts function. And if there's a post that should be released on that date, it will be included in this new deployment. And that's the magic of how you can super easily make scheduling work with a static page. Now, in the end, all of this comes down to, did you increase your performance or not? So I ran a little lighthouse uh, analyzation on my domain and I'm pretty fine with these results. Like I could certainly do something about accessibility. Uh, that's certainly not improved yet. I don't have a progressive web app yet, that's fine, but I'm happy that the SEO seems good and the performance seems to be good as well. I think these stats are not really good, like it should be a lot faster. Um, however, yeah, I could probably size my images and reduce unused JavaScript. There are things I could do, but in the end, I just wanted to ship this and you know, once software is out, you don't really have time to improve it if it's not really super important anymore. So right now, I guess I'm fine with those results. They are definitely a lot better than I, what I had with WordPress before, simply because I had installed too many plugins and everything had just become slow over the years. You can, of course, still have a fast site with WordPress. I'm very sure about that. And you can most likely have the same results with WordPress. However, now that I got everything under my control, um, I feel like I'm kind of responsible and I can tweak the settings to improve the different areas here of my Lighthouse scores. Um, so you are completely responsible for the results and it's not like I install a magical plugin and then maybe it's getting better or maybe it's getting worse. No, you're really responsible for this now and I kind of like to be responsible for what I code and, um, and the outcome. So. Hope this is fine for you and the page works fine for you. If not, please let me know in the comments. All right, so that's the story of how I went from WordPress to a static site with SwelteKit. Is there a room for improvement? Of course there is, because I didn't spend like too much time on this. I just wanna make this a decent UI, a working static site example, have my scheduling in place and have all the basic stuff in place that I need to run this blog. However, there are things that could be impo uh, improved. For example, the image handling. I know with Next JS, there is an image component that you can use that automatically, um, I don't know, does some kind of pre-caching or CDN stuff and optimization. I don't think this exists with SwelteKit yet, or at least at the time when I was coding the blog, I haven't really touched the internals afterwards. So improving images or maybe also using a CDN in general could be something I might look into the future, but right now it's quite stable. Like I updated, I updated in Git, it is pushed, it is built. Um, I can get you a new post to it and everything at the moment just works and that feels great because that's kind of like transition from WordPress done. If you now want to do the same and got any questions about the process, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to help because I know this can be a pain for progress. The reward is actually pretty cool. So if you have a reason to do this, definitely go for it. It feels kind of cool. You can probably get into some new technology and learn a thing or two uh, while developing your new blog or your company's blog or whatever it might be. And in the end, you're going to have a great result. You're going to have a great static page with great SEO scores. And I'm sure you will love it once you're away from this whole WordPress ecosystem. So let me know if you get questions and of course, make sure you hit the like button and stay subscribed to the channel for more great videos coming in the next year. And until then, I hope you have a great time. I hope you will develop some epic code and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.